We previously touched a bit on the tweak values and how they kind of work on top of a shape, right? So let's just go and talk a tiny bit more about that. So here I've just got my cube, right? And if I select the vertex, you can see that it will give me the index of the vertex and it will just say zero, zero, zero. That is because as soon as I move it, it will add in basically like a tweak value that is the offset from the org shape, right? Or the, the actual shape data that is in the this shape, not the org shape, sorry. So anytime that you zero those out, it will just go back to the default pose. Now, what's kind of cool about this is that these are actually, um, they're actually plugs that you can connect directly into on the node. That basically means that if I take a locator, I can say, I can take the translate and I can plug it directly into the point. Uh, normally, if you if you try this, uh, the points won't always show up. But if you go and you try and go into control points, it will just kind of flick it over to the, the correct position in the points. So if I now move this, you can see that we're actually directly moving the position of that vertex. Now note that, as I said, it's an, it is the tweak position of this, so it, it will do it with an offset. Now, if you wanted to actually do this so that it matched up perfectly with where your locator was in, in world space, for instance, like, yes, you could offset your locator, but one way to do this as well is just to kind of uh, take, add a cluster and just scale it down and basically just collapse the mesh because then you will basically offset from zero. So you're going to have like a perfect one-to-one -one representation there. So if we do the same thing, I'll just add in our cube again, right? We can take our locator. We can take the translate, add that into just a point zero. So when we now move this away, we're not going to see anything because all the points are down here. So I'll just move this up a bit. Right, so you, but you can see now that all of these other points that we hadn't really done anything with, they're just at they were just at the origin. While when we move this around, you can see it's exactly where the locator is. Now this might be very useful um, for some uh, times if you want to have like some sort of direct relationship between your your shape and uh, some points in space. Potentially, if you got like a low resolution cage or something, and if you don't want to do like a whole skinning it, adding clusters, but you just want to drive it directly like this, this can be like a very nice way of doing it. Now, I haven't really used it with uh, polygons that much, but one place that I do use it a lot is with NURBS. Um, NURBS and specifically NURBS curves. So let's have a quick look at that. So I'm just going to make a curve here, just a crazy curve. And I'll add in just a locator as well. So I'll just get rid of that and I'll just make a locator here, locator. And I'll just get rid of this, I don't need that. And again, I'll just take the translate, put that into the curve shape. I'll just put it into control points control point zero. And this the kind of cool thing about uh, using the NURBS and the NURBS curves is that as soon as you add something into the control points, it snaps exactly to where it needs to be in the world. So that we can do this and it's just going to follow it like perfectly. And if I add in, you know, more, uh, I can add in just one for, let's just put it onto the, the last point So you can see now we have the last point here as well. So you can see what it's actually doing is it's just moving these vertices completely um, around in space. So it's just these guys 
and you can see it now if I try to modify these, it says uh, curve shape one control point is locked or connected and cannot be modified. And that's because we're, you know, we're connect, sorry, directly connecting into these guys. So this I actually use a lot for just creating curve setups. Instead of adding in clusters or skinning them, um, I just find this a lot easier to deal with and it just makes a bit more sense to me. Now, a couple of more notes here is that if I just do a new curve, if you have a curve that has a deformer on it, so if I just do this, I'll add in a cluster and you know, I'll go here, I'll just get rid of these and then I create another locator. I'll get rid of that and I'll do my translate into control point zero. Note that it didn't snap now because now as soon as you do um an, as soon as you have like a deformer on it or a, and a tweak node that's where it's going to go you can see that there's actually no connection between these now and if i just graph this backwards um you can actually see now the locator one is actually going into the tweak node so it's actually going into the control points of the tweak node and that kind of new geometry that it's doing there, that's passing on into here. So if, if I just graph this, you can see that it basically starts with the org shape of that curve. That goes into the group parts now to do its thing. That goes into the tweak. And then we basically have the control points that will then just tweak those values. And then the geometry will continue down into the cluster and then into the curve. So you can see it basically has a connection here between the, the tweak shape, as, uh, the tweak location as well. So it, it kind of knows about that relationship there. So that's just a quick heads up there. If you, if you wanted to, for some reason, have a deformer on your curve and then connect this directly, you'd probably have to do something where, um, well, probably what you could do is, I just realized this, I haven't tried this, but I wonder if you could just connect it directly into the org shape. I hadn't considered this until this point. So if we just get that open. So yeah, so that'll actually work if you want to do this and still have your kind of deformer on it. Of course, it kind of depends on what your deformer needs to do if it is reliant on having the actual original, original shape. Um, but if not, you could just do that. Huh. You learn something new every day, right? So let's just kind of jump onwards a bit and go back to and just double check this on the meshes again. Uh, you saw that basically when we did this on a cube, we were going to, or any polygonal mesh, we will always have the offset from the origin because it's basically adding into the offset. So let's look at that. Um, if we add a, in a deformer, just so that we've covered that as well. So we now got our deformer on here. Uh, I'll clean this, get rid of that. Oh, well, actually I'll keep that for now. Uh, no, I won't keep that because I was thinking wrong. So as soon as we do this and we do our translate, if we try to connect into the control points, Again, that's going to now connect into our tweak node. And we basically have exactly the same thing as we had previously. We're going to have that offset, but this time the offset, because we have a deformer on it, is going into the tweak node. It's not going, oh, you can go away. It's not going to go directly into the shape. Um, one thing that I was starting to talk about there, right, was that you could probably, I was wondering if you could do the the shape node, so the shape org. And I believe we're going to have the same issue as we had before, because as soon as you connect into the shapes, they don't snap like the NURBS curves does. Uh, but let's just try it just for fun. So if I do that. You can see that we still have exactly the same offset, just as we were seeing when we had a polygonal mesh without any um, deformers on it as well. So we'll have a bit of a look at 
how we can actually use this in a simple tentacle rig as well to kind of clean up our connections a bit.